My name is Christy Nogel, and this story is called Cocooning. One time when Donnie's sleeping, I look into the mirror long and hard. I couldn't explain why, not if you tortured me. I spoon behind him until I'm sure he's out, and then I stand and open my eyes. At first, it's just a shifting, shimmering movement too small to notice. My face, I know I'm holding it still, but it's moving slightly, crawling around the jaw. Then the mouth smiles and stretches tight, the motions just enough to bring on that alarmed feeling that made us cover all the mirrors in the first place. I start to see some things about my insides movements under my skin, muscles, heart, ribs. I lift my arm and I see the motions at every point. All these arms stuck in the air between the place where my arm was and the place where it is, and a big dark cave where my guts ought to be. The mirror is telling me something true that no one else can see. I'm hot and weak when I finally look away, I go on my stomach for the cool floor, not far from Mr. After a while, I feel cool and slide closer to him. He's a husky border collie mix, soft fur smelling of danger and the dirt from outside this place. I hug him into my belly and he sighs. I close my eyes. double meaning of the word cocoon. So the word cocoon makes you think of transformation or metamorphosis on the one hand, but the word cocooning makes you think of domesticity or being insulated at home. The characters in the story are in the middle of a transformation and they're trying to deny or delay that by focusing inward. I uh, developed this story in kind of an unusual way. I wrote it for a writing group challenge, and the challenge was to write the first bit of the story and get feedback, and then uh, write the middle and get more feedback, and then write the end. And so I think that the structure of that challenge kept me focused on having the story develop in a way that was different from what readers were expecting. I think um, the thing that's changed for me is that I started to think about plot at a certain point, maybe not that long ago. Um, I think when I first started writing fiction, I was um, much more focused on the details, like uh, lines of dialogue or descriptions. And now I have more of a sense of how a reader moves through the story and, and experiences the story over time. Well, as a reader, I would love to see more surprises in how stories unfold. So I guess my tip would be don't be afraid to deviate from whatever you think of as a classic plot. Um, sometimes a big climactic event sounds exciting in theory, but it can also be exciting or maybe more exciting to have a story veer off in a way that the reader isn't expecting. This is a tough question for me because what comes to mind immediately are the plot types that don't work. Um, but I'd say any movie I want to watch over and over or a book I'd want to read over and over because the main tension and the interest aren't just in finding out what happened. Um, so one movie that comes to mind that does that well for me is There Will Be Blood. I think it's because the plot doesn't seem contrived. It seems like a tragedy and the events are sort of inevitable based on who the character is. Oh, well, maybe not a particular example, but just the type of thing that doesn't work for me is uh, the kind of classic hero story where someone has to overcome overwhelming odds and then they triumph 
I usually get kind of bored uh, partway through that type of story. Oh, um, extraterrestrial theme. Under the Skin, um, that story with Scarlett Johansson was a favorite for me because it was so unusual. Um, and I, I, uh, I guess it kept me guessing all the way through. Oh, <laughs> I have several dogs over my lifetime who were some kind of husky or malmute. So I would say a northern breed dog is my favorite type of dog. Sure. If you'd like to read uh, more of my work, I have it all listed at christynogle.com. And you can also follow me at christynogle on Twitter.